Hey guys, and welcome to Little Black But 91. It's crazy. It's cr hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. It's crazy. It's crazy, it's crazy, it's crazy, it's crazy, it's crazy. It's really crazy. Listen, Denai Jackson um, came up on my feed uh, a few hours ago, and uh, she is putting up a course for $5,000. Um, and we need to talk about this, okay? Because let me tell you something. There ain't no way in the world that she's healed from what I saw in the interview. OK, and since I know she's not healed from the from that interview, I don't know why she needed to do this course so early. I'm asking myself real questions because she has obviously mentors and those who are uh, she has mentors and people who are uh, uh, covering her. So I should have told her, sis, I know you want to take advantage of the good press you just received, but this might not be the time to do this video. Because by no means did I see somebody that was healed on that screen with our brother, uh, uh, um, with our brother, dear future wifey. Now, here, let, let me let me be real with you. I told you guys that when you start using God and trying to be over spiritual, there are normally things underneath that that people aren't really covering. All that over spiritualness that we're doing about Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I love your name, Jesus. You know what I mean? I hear that. I love to lift you up. We bless your name, sweet Jesus, 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 Jesus. I hear that, and I'm with it, and I love it. But here's the thing: sis came up on our, uh, <laughs> sis came up on our on our on our screen and was bleeding all over the screen. Now, sis, you took a lot of accountability, and I'm with it. I, you took a lot of accountability, but I could tell you still weren't ready. OK, I could tell you still weren't ready by the way you were talking, sis. I'm not mad at it. I'm just saying that I don't think this is the right time to drop these courses. I think what you saw was an overriding well, uh, wave of women who were inspired by your story. But it, it makes good business. But I'm just thinking for the longevity and actual people healing. Do we do you believe in the right place to heal these people? Right. That's all I'm asking. OK, that's all I'm asking. I'm, I'm not I'm not, you know, I'm asking questions. So let's go through this particular uh, um, let's go through this particular, uh, you know, uh, thing and see what was going to be said. I, I, OK, so this, this if, let's, uh, OK, this is what she's offering. So first and foremost, I think she's working with a therapist as well, guys. So she's not doing this alone. I'm just saying the timing of it always a bit. I love to praise your name. You know what I mean? It's a little, it's a little bit, it's, it's a little bit too soon for me. Okay. All right. So like the first section she put here, these are going to be videos she's going to drop for you guys. Okay. For those who are going to be doing it right. And two payments of four, nine, five infidelity, uh, recovery boot camp, 40 days and nights of healing. Okay, all right. Um, she says, I teach inner healing and turn your pain into profit because your pain is valuable. And says, get a free copy of my book, Healing God's Way, The Art of Spiritual Warfare, Deliverance and Healing, plus up to three private sessions a week with me for a deeper for a deeper deep dive into your healing journey when bundle, infidelity recovery, boot camp coaching, turn your pain profit for three, four, nine, nine a month. Your investment includes an entire infidelity recovery boot camp plus coaching, accelerated digital, but video masterclass. Hey, there's quite a few things on here now. Entire the entire infidelity recovery boot camp. Um, um is that boot camp gonna be in person? Or is that 40 days and nights of healing? I teach inner healing. I wonder if that's gonna be in person or what. Um Okay, video masterclass, replay access to all of the sessions from the Infidelity Recovery Bootcamp, plus coaching sessions, Infidelity Recovery Bootcamp, uh, coaching, turn your pain to profit playbook, uh, eight sessions inside the your pain is valuable, so why not profit mastery masterclass, pain and profit mastery workbook, complete with brand messaging templates, three sessions inside the release your story masterclass, release your story handouts, 90 days access to your new tribe plus healing God's way, community inside the private forum. Okay, so she's going to have a private forum. 90 days of live coaching and mentorship with Danae Jackson. 90 days of live Q&A sessions, all sessions recorded. You'll have access to the digital curriculum for an additional 90 days for a total of six months. The Infidelity Recovery Bootcamp Coaching Accelerator, full digital program plus the mastermind. I mean, it seems like quite a lot she's offering there. I can't lie to you. All right. So, and then person leaned in a little bit closer um, and, you know, as well. Okay. 
<sighs> okay. So, can I be honest with you? Okay, can I be honest with you? First and foremost, okay, let me be honest with you. Okay. Um, there are many crooks out there, okay, called relationship coaches who are doing the exact same thing. They are charging you an arm and a freaking leg to get healed. Okay. I'm starting to feel bad. I need to up my coaching prices because this is madness. Here's me charging my little $50, you know, for an hour session. I need to take mine up to 4,000 because clearly I'm out of the loop. You know what I mean? Clearly I'm out of the loop. I'm going to, I have to raise my prices to at least, uh, I need to do at least, I need to make it at least a grand, like $1,000. I need to start charging $1,000 per session because this is madness, right? This is madness. You, you, you know what I mean? This is madness. Okay. And like I said, this is something that relationship coaches, not just relationship coaches, the 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 red pill, the manosphere, those kind of people, pink pill, all the kind of people, not pink pill herself, but the the all that 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 sphere of pills, or whatever, they do the exact same thing. They give you bollocks for an expensive price. And excuse my French, but let me say it again, they give you bollocks for an expensive price. Okay, overpriced courses. The things that they could have told you for free. Like my thing is, honestly, you know, like I, I want to be able to give as much quality and value, you know, to people as much as possible. You know what I mean? I, 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 I you know, and I, I, I want to, I want to help as many people. And so I don't, my thing was when I was making, when I was doing the coaching, it's not to make it so astronomical that I'm rinsing money in. I, you know what I mean? I don't want to become a millionaire overtaking after robbing the people because what's the point? Right. Like, what's the point? Do you see what I'm saying to you? If I want your healing, I also want healing in other areas. I don't want you to be financially broke to be healed in the emotion of your heart. That makes no sense. So we're doing 5K, 5K with two installments. Like, yo, I just need you to deep how much money that is. I don't care. I don't even care if that is freaking Anyala. It's a lot of money. Okay? You, that's a lot of money. Do you, do you see what I'm saying to you? It's a lot of money. So for me, it's like to 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 charge. I, look, I even have a, I even feel a way when I used to uh, people used to call me to come and preach to their church. I'd feel some type of way about asking money for perform for the for, I say performance, sorry for the um for the ministration. Like I don't personally like when I'm doing God's work. If I'm gonna preach, I don't want people paying me for the preaching. You can you can pay for my travel and some food, but if I'm if I'm here giving the word of God, which is free, I'm gonna give it to you for free. And, and, you know, so it's like for me to hear 5,000 pounds or dollars, which is around about three, three and a half, maybe 4K in UK pounds. All right. It's a lot of money to do these work. Okay. All right. All right. So that's what I'm saying. Okay. That's all I'm saying. And so it's a first of all, a lot of money. Number two, you're in, I don't think you're in any state at this current crop and moment in time to be able to do the work that you're talking about doing. Now, unless I'm seeing, I mean, unless you're telling me you're getting R.C. Blakes, you're getting Tony Gaskins, you're getting, uh, 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 what's the other, I love this lady's um, name. Ah, oh, gone ahead with a short hair, black woman. I can't remember her name. Spirit, let's say Spirit. You know, you're getting Anyala all for one. Then I can see 5K coming out because you're getting like four or five coaches who are experienced, who've got, you know, who have done things, are established. And you know what? You go and get some results. But sis, all I can see is you. All I can see is you, Lord, you, Lord, all I see is you. Like, all I'm seeing is you, sis. So I'm just saying, right now, all I'm seeing is a lot of you. And the Bible says, may he increase, so I decrease. And right now, sis, I'm not seeing you decrease. I'm seeing you increase. It's giving me stress. Because it's 5K, and we just we just literally just saw you do an interview with our brother, dear future wifey. And let's be honest, sis, you weren't fully healed. Like I, I, that's the reason. You know what's mad about this situation? Um, it's so interesting. Yesterday, you know, sometimes you have to listen to the Lord. Sometimes you just have to listen to the Lord. Um, yesterday, as I was walking, and in fact, I've been thinking about it for the last two days, but I got tired last night. I came home after the gym. I went to watch Little Mermaid. Came back from the gym. Um, it was about 12 o'clock when I got back home, sat down. I said, I'm knackered, bro. I just want to, I'm going to just take a little nap. And you know me, when I take a nap, I ain't waking up again. So I took a little nap, but before I was going to take a nap, I said to myself, when I get home, I'm going to do a video on, on codependency. Cause I was listening to a book called manipulation 
uh, and relationships. So it's like a four in one. And the part I'm listening to right now on the Audible is codependency. And she mentions on this codependent part, talking about how even codependents themselves end up becoming manipulative in the relationship. Because what they want is for you to be dependent upon them. And they want to feel like they have power to change you or to change a situation or have power to uh, uh, to, to cover you. If they don't change, it, it, you know, almost like, almost like Paige and Chris. Like if I'm not there, then he won't, then he will misbehave. But if I'm there, he won't misbehave. And actually, one of the things I, I, I thought about it at the time when I was listening to her interview was, and you heard me say this word about transformation, 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 right? That, uh, that our good sis here keeps transforming. If you notice it, and she's done it again. And it's so weird as I, I was going home and I said, I'm going to do a video on codependency and manipulation. I think that she's being manipulative in her aspect of her relationship with, with Derek Jackson. That's not to say that she's culpable, it, uh, to say that she's responsible for what's happening. It's to say, why does she stay so long? And, and, and I was like, and I was like, I'm going to do a video. I'm going to do a video. When I get home, I'm going to do a video. I'm going to do a video. I'm going to do a video. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do a video. Okay. All right. I'm going to do it. I got home and I said, oh, I'm tired, bro. I'm tired, bro. Okay. All right. I'm tired. Slept it off <laughs> nine hours later, blood. You get what I'm saying? Now, I say all of that to say that when I wake up in the morning and then I see that on my screen, I'm like, oh God, you told me. I should have listened to you. My intuition and you, my spirit was telling me. You know what I mean? My spirit and my intuition was telling me. You know what I mean? Our hands up, arms open, wide as a sky. We lift you high. We lift you high. You know, I should have been listening because as soon as I saw that, I said, ah. And one thing you have to understand as well, I want to keep it 100% real. There are way too many scammers, okay, in the church. Okay, the church alone has way too many scammers, okay? But we know this already because it's biblical. Jesus came in and started to sack everybody from the church saying, you've turned the, the, you turn the synagogue, you've turned the, you turn the temple of God into a den of thieves. Okay, so this is nothing new. OK, those those pastors who are crooks on the pulpit, you know who they are. You can call them out on your own. You know, those prophets that tell you to come to the front and plant a seed. You know who they are. You can call them out in the chat. You know, what I mean, now we have people who are relationship coaches doing the exact same thing. Doing the exact same thing who are literally OK, who are literally all right. Robbing people. Right. Now, I'm not saying you can't charge for this coaching that she's doing, but I'm saying, one, the timing's off, and number two, it's well expensive. Hella expensive. Okay? Hella expensive. Okay? So, you know, it's it, 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 you're robbing the people once more again, right? You, I know that you've paid for your, your therapist. I know you've paid for therapy. I get it. But right now, 5K is ridiculous. I don't care what you're offering. You know what I mean? Five K is ridiculous. Unless it's a retreat, like I said, I want to see Anyala. I want to see AJ. I want to see. I want to see a uh, 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 spirit. Okay. I want to see uh, Tony Gask. I want to see. Uh, you know, I want to see. Uh, um, <laughs> I want to see Stephen Speaks. You know what I mean? I want to. I want to see. I want to see uh, uh, my brother. Uh, uh, what's his name? Is it Mister Something J? Uh, I can't remember his name, but he the solid guy is very solid. He talks about men a lot as well. I like him. And RC Blakes. Unless I'm seeing all these people on a pulpit or signing for a week or two, I don't want to hear 5K. You know what I mean? Like, do you know what I'm saying? It, it, it's crazy. All right. So, so, uh, so I'm, I'm not with it. Now, let's talk some real stuff. Okay. All right. Let's talk some real stuff. She put, you did say it, Brief Five. You did say it as well. Yeah, you did say it. She put, she put um, that, uh, uh, that you know, if she was doing the back end of the stuff with Derek Jackson. I'm here to tell you, <laughs> I'm here to say <laughs> that I think she did a lot more than that. I think she did a lot more than just doing the back end stuff. I think she might have been heavily involved in perhaps maybe editing or rewriting or you know, some aspect of his work because the way she picked up the game so quite, and of course she's probably had a long time to observe. And remember, she did a lot of the back end stuff. 
Remember, the business picked up because she took the back end stuff and she hired people. She most likely hired the same people. She most unlikely hired the very same people that made Derrick Jackson, Derrick Jackson. She's hired the same people. Okay? Hired the same people, brought the game to her, had planned her little course or whatever, whatever. There's too many courses running around. For me, there's far too many courses running around. Far too many courses running around with little to no um, addition of help for people. You know? All right? And so for me, I think, I really think, okay? I really think, I really think, I hear you, Dahlia. I hear you. <laughs> I totally hear you. 5K is a lot. I really think, all right, that, uh, you know, it's a madness. Okay. I think, I really think it's a madness. Y you know what I mean? I think it's a madness. And I think that she knew what she has, she has watched, observed, been a part of helping build up the brand of Derek Jackson, took the ideas. Okay. All right. Took the ideas and then now she's put it in, put it into our, into our, into our mist. And in my head, I'm like, baby, why did you think to get that idea? Anyway, listen, let's get into, let's get into some conversation because uh, I need to, uh, you know, I need to, to break this down um, uh, an aspect because I really did get the, I was getting some codependency energy from her. Um, you know, and uh, I was like, oh, I think uh, this might be it. So I think I think now there's some aspect out. And again, I wanted to know, I mean, is she still at the same church? My question is, is she still at the same church? Is she still at that same goddamn church? Sorry, Lord. Sorry, Lord. Is she still at that, that, that church? Because that church, you know, we knew it was a little bit sussy. Okay. We knew it was a little bit sussy. Okay, so I'm on the, okay, let me just show you this. I, I'm on her, I clicked on her link just to see. I wanna, I wanna see it for myself. Okay, so I went on, I went on her page. I wanna see it for myself. Let's see what we're gonna be getting. So I'm on her page for the thingies. Let's see. When you join Healed Infidelity Recovery Bootcamp, you get raw, real, and honest discussion, Bible study, and guidance on how to heal from your trauma. One of the courses is called Let's Be Real. I'll bust the windows out of your car. And here's what one student has to say about it. When you join Healed, you'll learn how to overcome the deep-seated pain caused by infidelity and being haunted and provoked to anger by the affair partner, along with the secret disgust that you have for your partner. I help people who are looking for clarity on whether or not they should leave or stay in their marriage and they are suffering from silent pain that infidelity is causing without mm. fearing what their partner will think, say, or do. As they heal from the silent pain that unfaithfulness causes, get a three-day free trial when you enroll today. Let's heal God's way. Mm. Mm. Come out! Come out! Spirit of divine financial breakage and brokerage and brokenness. Come out! Release her! Release her! Release her! Because that's what we're giving right now. That's what it needs. I ain't gonna lie to you. I'm sorry. That's what it's giving right now. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Come out, you spirit of divine financial brokerage. Sorry, just sorry. I apologize, guys. I know how you is. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's just it's just giving that energy. Do you know what I mean? It's it's just it's just giving that energy. You know what I mean? Uh, I I can't even lie to you. You know what I mean? I can't lie to you. You know what I mean? I can't lie to you. It's giving that. Come out! Come out! Spirit of divine financial brokerage. Sorry, just wanted to just. Douse you with a little bit of oil upon your forehead. Just a little bit of forehead energy there. Just want to take you out of there, guys. Okay. All right. Just want to make sure you know as well. Okay. For now, any of you guys, I feel the Lord is saying to me right now. Let me wipe my screen because I put it wet. I feel the Lord is saying to me right now that there is at least 10 people here who are willing to give a seed. A seed 
on the cash app. In fact, let me put my cash up there because you know what? Since everybody's here scamming, let me also join in because I hear the word of the Lord speaking to me right now, telling me to release my cash app upon this screen because I hear the Lord saying to me, there is at least 10 people willing to give $100 in a cash app. So let me put my cash app upon the screenage. Father, we just pray that, Lord, they release their wallets and give into the cash app. Because clearly, I'm not doing this game right. Clearly, I'm not doing this game right. In fact, guys, I have holy water in here, which I've drunk from. And it's only a little bit left. But once you drink this, 24-hour miracle will take place. I promise you, any cheating man that you have in your life will be surrendered to your will. I Look, if you take this water here, in 24 hours, the man you desire is here. You drink this water, any woman who said no to you will say yes. And they will say yes, yes to your will, yes to your will. Choir, can we get a little song? Yes to your, can we get it in C, please? Yes to your will, tell my heart, say yes. Just pass it to your neighbor. Say yes, yes to your will, yes to your will. And my heart says yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> ah, Father, I feel a breaking, I feel a breaking. I feel a breaking. Oh my God, Father, I feel a breaking. The cash up is loading, as I can see it now, Lord. It's loading. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you, you are you. That like you. Just because I'm not doing that doesn't mean you're not scamming people. Okay. Just because you ain't doing that don't mean you're scamming people. Okay. That doesn't mean you're not scamming people. Okay. That's what I'm trying to tell you. All right. So, 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 just because you see me doing the extra, extra stuff. You know, it looks extravagant. And so everyone can spot that one once you get smart anyway. You can spot it, right? But the reality of the situation is that's what she's doing. And that's what other people are doing too behind the gaze of I'm helping people. You're robbing people. You're robbing them. You know I me. Mean? Now, the reason why I feel like this is manipulative is because now it's making me think back to when you said that she said this. God wouldn't allow me to go on any particular platform, but I prayed about yours, dear future wifey, and I knew I should come on yours. Do you know why I think she went on to dear future wifey? Because of the credibility. I want to be honest with you. The credibility. You know, the credibility of dear future wifey, that once you put your message on dear future wifey, no matter how anybody feels about her, I know some people don't really like her, that's cool, whatever. The credibility of his platform is that there's one, visibility, Number, number two, also, because he has a knack for telling these deep, deep stories, you put in your story. Now, I see the, I see the cash. I see the ca see, I see it come through, sis. Now, you didn't hear instructions, sis. Now, you didn't hear instructions because I said cash out, people. YouTube going to take 55%. Then let me rebuke you in this place. I appreciate you, Jay. Appreciate you. Appreciate you, Hannah. Appreciate you, too. Appreciate you as well. All right. Um, but no, in all, re in all reality, the serious, the serious of the situation is that for her, you know, you know, uh, going on to Dear Future Wifey, that platform is all about deep stories. So when, whenever you come on there, it's about deep stories. Now, I don't know. I would have to ask him if he knew, you know, and he's a Christian platform, too. That's also very true as well. It's a Christian platform, too. OK, it's a Christian platform, too. So now what you what you what you realize is she, she I, I'm, I'm I now have to reconsider whether this was really you saying the Lord was telling you or whether you saw an opportunity? Did you see an opportunity? Because that's completely different. Do you know what I mean? You, 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 you might have seen an opportunity here and now you've got, now it's blown up. Because let's be honest, the, the video's on like 550,000. It's on Shade Borough, which is a UK version. It's on Shade Room, the American one. It's on Neighbourhood uh, uh, Talk. It's on uh, whatever you can think of that is a major blog site on Instagram, which has over a million uh, million followers. It's on there. On Twitter, it's doing rounds. This is global. Yeah? And when I say global, Western Hemisphere global. Right? So you actually have to deep it that this has now made sure that she has got what she needed. Now, I don't know if our, our brother, um, I don't know if our brother was involved. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But in the end, sis, it's feeling like a scam. 
Okay. Now, a reason why I wanted to look at codependency a little bit, because I think that was the closest thing that I saw towards what she was at the time, right? So when we talk about codependency, it's a dysfunctional relationship dynamic that dates back oftentimes to childhood. Kids who grow up on dysfunctional families learn that they are bad, unworthy, stupid, incapable, and a cause of family dysfunction. These beliefs and experiences create the root cause for adult codependent relationships. In fact, let me see if I can put that in um, across the screen for you guys as well, so you guys can see that um, as well. Let me see if I can see that. Okay. Okay, so I can't even put the whole thing on, but I'll put at least most of it. So, right, okay? so this is one, one definition of codependency I found. I think it's on Psych Central. Um, so one aspect of codependency. And I'm going to explain why. I, I'm not saying it is codependency, but why my thought went to codependency in a sense, right? Um, and then there's another definition that says codependency is a dysfunctional relationship dynamic where one person assumes the role of a giver. They sacrifice their own needs and well-being for the sake of the other. The taker, the bond in question doesn't have to be romantic. It can occur just as easy between a parent and a child, friends and family and members as well. Let me put that up uh, as well so you guys can see that aspect too. Okay, so there's another, another definition. Oh, sorry. Let me put that definition too. Uh, yeah, here we go. So you can see that one. Uh-uh. Okay. I can only do 200, apparently, the words. So there we go. This is the second one I saw again. Codependency is a dysfunctional relationship dynamic where one person assumes the role of the giver, sacrificing their own needs and well-being for the sake of the other, the taker, the bond. The bond doesn't have to be in uh, just a romantic relationship. It can be between um, a parent um, and a, a child as well. Now, the book I was actually listening to, um, the book I was actually listening to was quite interesting because the book that was explaining it was saying about half my codependent perspective that she at points in time manipulated. She wanted to get the other party to care and to listen and to, and to feed into her codependency. And what was interesting was listening to Denea, she also mentioned some aspects of her relationship that where, um, uh, I think some aspects where she said, obviously, that she even didn't want to speak up. So when, for instance, he was cheating, at the very beginning, when he was cheating, instead of her speaking up and saying, I, I found out, I don't like what you've done, she just changed it into, um, into uh, uh, you know, I'm crying about my father. Okay? I'm crying about my father. And so instead of actually telling him the truth, she changed it so that he can feel sorry for her and that he would give her the love that she wants. So instead of actually... Being ready to say, confront it, and then leave, okay? Um, instead of having those two platforms, uh, no, sorry. Instead of, instead of obviously, you know, getting up and leaving the relationship, what she, what she was saying she was doing was she would be silent, and then she would try to manipulate the situation to get him to care. And I think, oh, okay, I see it. I was like, okay. I see it now. Okay, I see it. Sis, sis is out here, didn't want to... And one of, the, one of the aspects of codependency is the fear of not being needed. So if he did, if he dispatches of you, which he did quite frequently, a codependent person will try to work their way back into the relationship because they need to be needed. And actually the person who's the abuser and the codependent are actually manipulating each other to try and get their needs met. Normally it's a narcissist, a narcissist and a codependent, but you can't become dependent codependent twice. And one of the things, aspects of the codependent person is both of the parties are trying to validate, uh, seek some validation from the other party. Um, and being a giver and a caretaker, they try to seek validation from that. Now, this can actually happen not just because your mom over relied on you or put you in too much area of responsibility. This can happen simply because, you know what, you had a lot of neglect in your childhood. And if you listen to her story, the one thing that was really prevalent about her story, and I went to listen to it again, is the issue around the fact that at the very beginning when she started as a child in the womb, and someone sent me something called epigenics, which is about um, our genes and our cells. So I really appreciate you sending that. That in the womb, okay, in the womb, um, you know, in the womb, what could happen is that, uh, uh, the, I say in the womb, in the womb, she said about how 
she didn't know if she was her father's. And then when she came out, what was happening was that there was still some dis dispute over her, who she was in terms of was she her father's or not. Then when she would go to visit her father, there was rejection there too. So an over an over rejection and 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 um and loss of uh, uh, affection and protection can also send you into that space too, right? Um, so it was it was quite interesting to hear. That. I was like, oh, um, you know, Jen. I mean, yeah, that's where she should have gone. That's where she should have gone. She should have gone for a tell-all book. Then people would have bought that because people like salaciousness. They would have bought into that. So you're actually right. She should have done that instead. Uh, let's have a look. Um, I want to see if I can find that, if I can find that part of the story where she was telling it because she was telling that part. I want to see. Okay, I'm going to put it on to here because I want to be able to go back to the beginning because she's talking about her trauma and I think that was oh that's what sort of the screen oh crap here we go let's go let's go I'm sorry Miss Jackson Ooh, I am for real never meant to make it so not only is she not crazy she's absolutely brilliant so wow. and while I was introduced to Christianity and actually did have time, you can get a side of me that's very just like, like, let's throw some spice. I'm from, Hold on. Uh, let's unpack that. Yeah, so abandonment um, with my father, I had teenage parents. My mom was 16 when she had me, my father was 18. They never really had a relationship per se. They were just supposed to be playing video games. <laughs> they were playing with other things. <laughs> Here you go. Merry Christmas, right? Because my birthday is in December, a couple days before Christmas. So oh, okay. Video games, here I go, the present. <laughs> and so, you know, there's a, a little bit of rejection and abandonment there, right? Because I never really had parents that were a couple. Yeah. Right? Mm. And then in that, because of that, you know, there was some question about whether or not I was actually my father's oh, or not. Yeah. And so then I had that, even though I wasn't even born yet to receive that per se, but that still affected me because I, I grew up and found out about that. And then there was rejection. And then just the relationship that I had with my father um, growing up, I felt like he just wasn't as present as he could be, or he would always... Um, not come through or follow through on his promises when he said he would do something. And so that all affected me. And then boom, he died when I was 12. And so then, you know, I'm just left to try to figure out this thing on my own. And so there's abandonment, there's rejection there. And as I was younger, mm. I used to be like a tomboy per se. Right. This is the part important. And that was because I wanted the affection of my father. I had three brothers two brothers mm -hmm. um, at the time. And so they were playing football. He was their football coach. He was involved in all their activities. And I'm over here, you know, just this little chubby girl over here. You're chubby. You're chubby I was fat. <laughs> most important part. <laughs> I was fat, <laughs> you know. Uh, <laughs> and I, and fat little girl. I was, I was. My mom was in culinary school at the time. So she was practicing and <laughs> I was, was eating. eating. <laughs> <laughs> you was helping her pass her assignments. Exactly. And so um, I would try to, you know, win his affection and his love by trying to be like a tomboy, like my brothers, like play play football. I wanted to be on a football team. <laughs> my mom was like, absolutely not. But all of that stemmed from my childhood. And then that transformed as I grew older and then transformed into the relationship that everybody is interested in. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> so I think that beginning, I think it's probably a bit more deeper. I think she she even there's something deeper even there as well but definitely i see some um you know definitely i see there is uh some deeper aspects when it comes to uh her relationship uh with her father and i think that also plays a huge part um in the deficiency that i see right um but i i, I think she's a very clever woman she's always been a very clever woman right she did that from the very beginning remember she did that from the very beginning now, she's a very clever woman. And when Derek Jackson came in, she tutored him. Okay, she tutored him. So clearly this woman's no, she's no, she's no, she's not an idiot in that regard. Okay. Um, and I think uh I think also what plays into it, she's a transformer. 
Yeah. I'm going to say it again. She is a transformer. See, when she broke down the story, I kept on saying that word transformer, transformer. But when she broke the story down, if you listen carefully, she's always transforming. So when it came to her dad, she was transforming. When it came to Derek Jackson, instead of leaving, she transformed again. Okay? She transformed again. So what you realize is when she got to Derek Jackson and he was cheating and sleeping with women, instead of actually quitting the relationship, she transformed again. So she transformed to try and do what? She ends up becoming part of the roster. Now trying to, I'll see you on Tuesday. You know, da, da, da. She transforms again. Okay. All right. So all of that, all of all that aspect, she, she knows how, oh man, she knows how to, um, uh, she knows how to uh, maneuver, right, in order to get what she needs to get. And there is a lack of identity, in Natasha. And this is why I said about codependency. Because part of the codependent aspect is that what can happen is a from a childhood aspect, when the identity is not solidified, a child will try to do things at a young age in order to achieve the love it wants. One aspect is... You know, let's say, for instance, a girl or a guy, let's say, for instance, a girl, because it's easier because she's a woman. Uh, a girl may uh, try to uh, sleep with several men, but she's not doing it because she wants to sleep with several men. But she's trying to receive the validation from the popular girls. Um, and she sees that how when she's hangs around with the boys, they give her validation. Right. When she hangs around with the popular boys. Even though she'll be sleeping with them, she says she she she's excited by it. It gives her the validation and the attention that she requires. But at the end of it, she's not satisfied because it actually doesn't fulfill the role or fulfill the need that she actually wanted. She wanted to be in the clique with the cool girls, but the cool girls now reject her. And then what she has is in that moment when the cool girls, which is what she wanted to be around, the popular girls, because she wanted validation, when they reject her, she loses. Her, she has an identity crisis. Do you get it? So I think in this aspect, her identity wasn't fully formed. Now, a lot of us have at least some aspects of our identity kind of solidified, you know, growing up. But she didn't have that because her father died at 12 and she, he wasn't very emotionally present, but had her mum there. And her mum was working culinary and more than likely mum maybe didn't have as much time as she needed to, to support her emotionally. She had two boys as well may not have had the time when she's focusing on her career and her business, right? Okay. So, um, then obviously, so then obviously, unfortunately, the, the, the rape happens. Okay. All right. And then, you know, um, and then she meets Derek Jackson three weeks later. So not having a solidified identity. And remember, again, she's thrown into another place where she has identity issue. She says to us quite clearly, after the rape, unfortunately, there is a situation that she's in a school which is predominantly more black, where she came from a predominantly more white society. So again, identity is, is again being shifted. So again, she's having to transform once more. Right? She's having to transform once more. Okay? Shout out to uh, Dr. BW, right? She's having to transform once more again. And so in the aspect of being in that space, when she gets to that new school, unfortunately she's been raped, and then she has to try and figure, then she's trying to become more black, quote unquote. She meets Derek Jackson, who then, uh, you know, is going to help her also figure that aspect out. Then, and then, you know, she's still not solidified. So she hasn't healed from the wounds of the rape situation. He then disrespect, he's then disrespecting her by cheating on her. Right, because he can see she has no identity and no boundaries with that, ends up cheating on her. And then instead of her going, Do you know what? This is mad. Let me get out of the situation. Identity crisis hits again. What does she do? She goes deeper. Okay. She goes for another identity crisis. She goes deeper. And so now she goes into a relationship and then goes, Okay, he's cheated on me, but I'm going to do what? I'm going to transform again. And I'm going to win his affection. Right? So at that point now, now she's, now she's doing... And one of the things about codependency is they become martyrs in the relationship. They'll do whatever it takes 
to be needed. They'll do whatever. They'll do whatever it takes to be needed. You see it. So they become a martyr in a relationship because they're trying to do whatever it takes at the detriment of their own needs to retrieve that love from that person. So what does she do? She does something that most people will think to themselves, why would you do that? No, we can, we under, you know what I mean? You end up becoming part of the roster. And she ends up manipulating him by getting another boyfriend to make him jealous to bring him back into the relationship. That's the manipulation. Right? So in st- <laughs> someone says, ain't she tired? She does it again. <laughs> Oh my gosh. So instead of instead of instead of leaving the relationship, again once more, she transforms, becomes part of the roster. And, well, she first of almost, yeah, comes part of the roster. That don't work. And then when they when they finally break, whatever, whatever, then she now gets a boyfriend to try and twist him back into the relationship. I think oh well, that was before it. I think twisting him back into the relationship before that. Then he ends up cheating, whatever. So you think to yourself, wait, babe, aren't you gonna leave? Don't you think that he's doing you dirty? And you'll realize now nah, because in her head, she needs to feel validated that she, and what did she say? She told us, she told, you know, you guys kind of said it first, but when we, when we watched it together, what did she say? She said, I won. What did she win? She won the affection of the man she was chasing. Right? She finally found her place of being needed. So what does she do also to transform? How does she transform? She became the back end of the business. She found her place of need. Right? So instead of quitting the relationship, she goes deeper again. Right? Deeper again. All right? And and remember how they start the relationship. They start the relationship based on a need. Right? And then they they go deeper again, get married, whatever. And then she becomes a part of the back end of the business, showing her need again. That she's that she's needed, sorry. Okay, ends up becoming part of the back business. The cop, the thing is blowing up. She's hiring more people back and forth, and he's still cheating. You get it, right? He cheats again. Several women never putting down the woman at all. And what does she do again? She continues. Now, of course, she decided to leave once or twice. We know that during the course of the marriage, you know, decided to leave in that. But that is the codependent kind of spirit, similar, very similar. I'm not saying it is. I'm just saying it sounds very close to the codependent spirit, you know. Um, so so for me, I was like, oh, no, I think, I think, uh, I think there's going to, I think there's going to be, I think, I think she's, she wants to be in a place of need for him, you know. Now, I, I again, I don't the church, the church that she's at. I remember the church. I don't remember what church they're at now, or whether they're the same church or whatever. But I remember that church being a little bit sussy. So for me, it's like if they're still at that same church, you know, if they're still at the same church, I'm a little bit concerned because if I remember, okay, that church weren't necessarily. It's, I remember that church being a little bit cultish, still. It's a little bit, if I remember correctly. I may be wrong, and I, I don't, I don't mind standing corrected, but it's giving a little bit cultish. I can't lie to you. I remember the church, um, and I don't know if they're still there. Okay, all right. So what is interesting is that what is her settled identity, and it's interesting as well. And I think this happens to a lot of Christians anyway. When you first become a Christian, because remember you're changing your identity is how she's also coped, copped the identity of the Christian. Now, I'm not saying she isn't a Christian. I'm not saying she isn't. I'm saying that it's interesting to see how she's kind of copped the identity of the Christian, but the Christian that she's copped is a very, um, you know, is very... Uh, is very, uh, 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 you know, religious in this aspect. You know what I mean? So for me, it's like, oh, okay. So she's copped another identity. 
Hmm. So, I mean, this is the first time we ever saw more of her, I, I guess, more of her personality on the interview. She's funny, you know, she's witty, she's sarcastic. She throws a little shade here and there as well. That's the most that we got. That's the first time we've kind of seen more of her personality. But every time we've seen her, she's been copying an identity. So it's like, you don't really know her. Does she really know her? This is why she needs time alone, because she needs to figure, she needs to, there is a lot of work she's going to have to do to undo the identity that she's always been that she's always been taken on. You know? You, you see what I'm saying to you? So for me, I, I just think that needs to also take some place as well. Um, you know, hey, she might be playing us, we don't even know. She might be playing us, but I just that's where I see the manipulation. Dr. BW said, Amen, transform and manipulate now using their sin you participated in, condoned and became victimized by to rob those who are victimized thus transformed into he who you worship Derek jackson oh okay okay i hear that she's become the person the problem the similar person as Derek jackson himself now i hear that i hear that that is very that's very true that copying the identity of Derek jackson too uh to to become and it's do you know what it's very similar to it reminds me of the two people that that scan christians oh what is their name i did a video on them uh the american the guy that's got very he's very good looking he's got um almost like greenish eyes br uh, uh bl black guy and light skin girl i can't remember her name and his name um oh my days uh what is their name um but they also were scamming Christians as well with their courses and stuff like that. Um, and I can't remember what their name was. Uh, they were also scamming people in America. And I'm trying to remember her, their name um, at the time. But they were similar, same thing. It's like, you know, you know, you're robbing people. You know, this wasn't, you know, this wasn't true. You know what I mean? You 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 know you know it's not true. You know that it's not, not true. Everything that you're saying, you know that you, don't, you you're not fully healed yet. You know you haven't finished. You know you you know you got more healing to do. You are not even close to being where you need to be. But yeah, I, I imagine that couple too. There's so many of those kind of people out there. Disappointing to be honest. Um, Heaven Lindsay, ah yeah, Heaven. There's two of them. Yes, Heather Lindsay and Dana Chanel. That was one I was thinking of. I was actually thinking of Dana Chanel. Sorry. That was the one I was mainly thinking of, Dana Chanel. That was the main one. But Heather Lindsay, I, I covered them too as well. So Dana Chanel, Heather Lindsay, scammers. Scammers, 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 scammers. Scammers. Okay. Scammers. All right. So it's like, again, um... <laughs> Jumping Jacks and Tax Prince Donnell. Yeah, you already know what it is. You know, so again, these people are using the, the, the allure of Christianity and using our good nature against us, um, you know, as well. So it's like, you know, I personally... Sorry, my, my mic went out there. But, um, yeah, you know, they, they, I don't think there's anything more we could say to this situation apart from the fact that, you know, um, I, and to think, you were telling us about, you know, the jealousy of your child, helmet of salvation, she can argue, um, you know, she couldn't. She couldn't even apologize for, uh, you know, her 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 cursing people out with G. That's a part that got me, you know. And I always knew that sign weren't true. Um, so I, I mean, listen, this is somebody said who said they're trying to protect their mental health with the word of God. They are they're on they're on the verge. So I'm like, if you're on the verge, sis, why do you think doing a course is going to help right now? You know what I mean? 
why do you think that's gonna help? If you know yourself, sis, you're even just about you're just about getting through. The word of God is just about covering you. Why do you think that you now going into 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 not even, I won't even call it ministry coaching? It's gonna be helpful right now. You know. I don't know. It's just for me, it's a little bit. And I knew this anyway, because the way she was preaching told me everything to know. The way she was preaching told me that, you know, whatever, whatever church it was at, I was like, I don't know what kind of church she's at or what kind of Christian in that. She's becoming that kind of Christian where, you know, they 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 always uh become religious, you know. Um so yeah. Um uh, mm. let me just put put this across. Let's see what I just I'm on a page now in it, so I'm just trying to see something. Let's see that will give us some clues to what's going on here, you know, because this is a level of madness for me. Let me just see if we can get some clues. Uh let's see. The power in confession comes from taking accountability and responsibility for your actions, regardless of the wrongs of someone else. James 1 5 6, James 5 1 6. Encourages us to confess our sins to one another so that we may be healed. In my exclusive interview, I confess to the world my sins that contribute towards my towards that contribute towards toward, to, to my public um relationship on sour. It was in his in this confession that many are able to describe the silent torment they have been struggling with for years. Healing was released, not only for me, but also for those who you could identify with my story and experience, the anointing that I carry is that of the wounded healer, which resembles that of the resurrected Christ, Christ Jesus, who is alive, seated at the right hand of God with the wounds from the cross still in his hands, feet and side. Yet he is a healer of our broken and contrite spirits. As the Lord has healed me, he is healing me in other ways. He is also healing those who've sat in the same dark places that I have. God is faithful and he will use all of your life experiences to work together for your good. Trust the process and learn not to lean on your understanding. Okay. Let's see what she's saying. To my ministry, Danae Jackson Ministries, it means so much to me. And um, I don't know, have all the words right now to express all the gratitude and appreciation that I have. But I, I do see it and I do feel it. And I'm so grateful for all of your love and support. And um, I'm also still processing the fact that so many are reaching out to me, letting me know that um, I have given them some words to describe their feelings and emotions that they have been struggling with for years. And now they have some words to describe that and that they feel heard now. They have a voice and um, it just goes to show that we overcome by the blood of the lamb in the power of our testimonies. And I just want to encourage those of you out there who were touched by um, my testimony, my experience that mm. there is a hope, there is a future and God will still use all of those things for his glory in your life. And um, I'm speaking healing and blessings over you today. God bless. Mm. Good morning and happy Sunday. Let me see. She, I think she's still at Ed Citron. Is he at Ed, Ed Citron Ministries? Let's see. I just want to see. I just want to see what the ministry is. You know, isn't it? Is she still in this guy? Is she still? Please don't tell me she's still at the church. Isn't this the guy that was doing the the the, the fake healings and that? Is this not the guy that was doing the fake healings and that, kids? Oh, am I the wrong? Is that the wrong guy? Let me not speak too soon. Is this not the guy that was doing the fake healing? Ah, it's get it. Let me see this. Let me just see this. Hold on. Can a demon enter you or enter a person by watching certain types of movies? Yes, but number one, not every movie is demonic. Number two, not everything is, is, is a demon danger. There are movies, there are books, there are music that are demonically manufactured. People expose themselves to these movies. For example, they open themselves up to the demonic world. Number one, demons need a legal ground. Number two, they have entry points. The, the eyes, the, the ears, the mouth, through the sexual organs. 
People go watch a movie like Avatar. When you go to a movie that is demonically embedded with demon powers, whether you are a Christian or not, you may be exposing yourself to the demonic. So when you watch a movie, you're using your eyes. Uh, the eyes are gates. Jesus mentioned that that the eyes are like a, a window to the soul. And, and through a window, right? If you leave your window up, a uh, bird can come in, a thief can, can enter your house and so forth. So the eyes allows good things and bad things to enter your soul. In Matthew chapter 6, Jesus said that, that the lamp of the body is the eye, right? And he said, if therefore your eye is good, your whole body then will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, in other words, if your eye is exposed to the wrong thing, your whole body will be full of darkness. The first uh, movie that came out, Avatar, article, they had an article that reported that many people that watched that movie were suffering from different things, depression, discouragement, suicidal tendencies. Concerning an individual that, that, that posted this on the fan forum back then, and he quoted this. He said, when I woke up this morning after watching Avatar for the first time yesterday, the world seemed great. Can a demon enter you or enter a person? Yeah, see, this is the kind of stuff that I'm talking about. Now you see, now you see where she get it from. If that's the church that she's at, still, I know she was at the church previously. I don't know if she's still at the same church, but if that's the same, if that's the same church she's at, oh, that is why. This is why. This is why. This is why. Look, let you know we have to look. Let me be real with you, okay? I don't think everything is up for consumption. As a Christian, I don't think there's everything we need for consumption. The Bible tells us very clearly that you know um, we can do all things, but not everything edifies an individual. I'm paraphrasing, but you know what I mean, right? You know, you can do you can do whatever you want to do, but not everything uh, uh, edifies the individual believer. For instance. I can go and play sports. It doesn't edify my spirit to go and play sports. It really doesn't, right? But it's relationship building with people and it's a way to detox and distress. Now, again, watching a movie, I just went to watch Little Mermaid. Now, of course, in my head, I was looking at it like, you lot are playing with mermaids. And it's funny because for us as Africans, that is what we call mummy water. And mummy water is a spirit, a marine spirit. You know what I mean? Right. So one could say that, you know, are you getting a demon through that? But I'm like, no, because first and this is why I keep saying, but I personally believe like as a Christian, you can't be demonized. If you really are born again, you can't, because what you're really saying is that demon can overtake. When I say de demonized, possessed, you can be possessed when the de that means you're saying that the demon can be stronger than the spirit inside of you. How? Are you saying that the demon is stronger than the spirit of God that's inside of you? Are you saying now Satan, after being conquered by the spirit in you to be born again, can be reconquered by the spirit of darkness? What kind of spirit do you have in you? What kind of God do you serve? Is that what we're saying? So I'm going to go watch Avatar and I may catch a demon. That's not going to happen, bro. It's not going to happen. Now, can it be that there, were, there are films out there that can influence you in a, in a way of thinking? We know this already. Like I said, depend on your, depend on again what God has called you to. I can't watch horror films. I don't like them. I don't like being scared like that. It's for me. Okay? It's for me. You know what I mean? That's for me. Um, you know, uh, that's for me. So I, I personally won't do that because for me, it, it affects me, right? Um, someone said, can you be demonically oppressed? I mean, there's some thoughts to that. Oppressed would mean that the, the body is being under attack. Potentially, yeah. It, you know, potentially. I wouldn't go too deep into that. I say potentially, I hear you. I can see, I can see, I can, I can be open to it. But again, I'm very careful about that as well. You know what I mean? I'm very careful about that again as well. You know, um, and a lot of times when people when people try to prove that point, they oftentimes use Old Testament. Notice that we keep on using Old Testament, not New Testament, because a lot of the stuff doesn't get spoke about in the New Testament. Because once a believer has a spirit in them, it's a completely different ball game. So whenever we talk about oppression, I'm like, do we see this in the Bible that Christians are oppressed by demons? Hmm. You know what I mean? Oppressed. I don't think we see that personally. And I may be wrong. I may sound corrected. I may sound corrected, but I, I don't necessarily see that in the Bible per se. 
Um, you know what I mean? So again, each person has to come into their own understanding, their own growth. If horror films, you can watch it and you're a Christian, by all means, if you feel like you can watch it, be cool. I personally can't. I'm not going to start telling you, don't watch it because it, nah, because fam, you may be at where you are. It works for you. It doesn't work for me, but that's just how my mind is set up. You know, certain things don't have to be prescribed. It's descriptive. It's for you. It's for you. Right? It's like, it's like also things like, for instance, um, it's also, uh, for instance, as well, like, uh, um, for instance, we talk about um, uh, uh, we talk uh, we talk about um, what was I gonna say? Oh, it's gone in my head. It will come back to me. Um, it'll come back to me as well. Um, someone said, uh, "Absolutely, Miss T. Absolutely." We spoke about this last time as well. We spoke about this last time that. When people first come to Christ, there's usually a lot of attacks because what Satan is trying to do, trying to discourage you. And also for God, it's like he's reproofing you. It's like he's he's improving you. He's like, you know, look, the, the kingdom of darkness don't like what you're doing right now. Like, come on, you know. Um, so definitely those things do happen. I definitely, definitely hear on that. You know what I mean? So definitely hear on that. Uh, <laughs> I hear you, Katie. And look, and again, we're not saying that I'm not saying there isn't influence. I'm not saying there isn't influence from these things. I'm not saying there isn't any level of influence. There's definitely influence. Even from a psychological point of view, there's definitely influence. So watching things, reading things will definitely influence you in some type of way. Right. So definitely hear that. Um, you know what I mean? Um, so I definitely hear that. I definitely hear you. You know what I mean? So I'm not I'm not saying um that these things don't begin, but I'm just saying I, I'm very, very careful. Someone mentioned, for instance, when Jesus said to, to Peter uh about get behind me, Satan. Uh, but I think that again, I think making that very prescriptive again, G that at that point Jesus hadn't even died yet. So when we talk about New Testament, remember, Gospels are not New Testament. They're old. The Gospels, Mark, Matthew, Luke, and John, are Old Testament. Because Jesus hasn't died yet. The New Covenant has not been contracted yet. The New Covenant starts when Jesus gives up the ghost on that cross, dies, and then resurrects on three days. And after that, the Spirit now enters man. You know what I mean? And the reborn happens. Before that, spirit will come upon the spirit of the Lord will come upon somebody. Upon. It wouldn't dwell within. This is the change. Do you know what I'm saying? So I'm not saying um I'm not saying that again that we should we shouldn't we should listen to everything and do everything. I'm saying you need to be careful how you are. Um you know what I mean? You need to look at it from your perspective. Do you believe that's cons it's going to be good for you? Okay, that's the, that's the question. You know what I mean? Uh, do I believe in dom demonic uh, d demonic possession at all? Yeah, it happens. There are people out there who are demonically depressed. You can get they get possessed. Yeah, it can happen. Um, so yeah, I hear you. Um, I definitely hear you. Um, yeah, it does happen, you know. Oh, that was gonna say, I personally, yeah, personally, can I just say it's my last point before I go back onto the video? I, I can't, I cannot stand, I cannot for the life of me stand people in church when they do the rabba yeg debe and then they are rolling around on my ground, and I'm like, I need you to get up, yeah, I need you to get up, rise. I've been slain by the spirit. No, rise. Rise up. Because a lot of times this slain by the spirit ain't real. I'm just going to be real with you. I'm not saying it isn't happening. I'm saying a lot of it is not real. I'm, I'm sorry. It's not. It's not. I, I, I just got to be real with you. I'm sorry. I'm a person. 
uh, you know, some of it is too much. It's too much. You're here rolling on the ground. When did you ever see any of the Christian disciples rolling on the ground? Now, did they prostrate? Did, did they go and lie down? Yes. Did they dance? Did they rejoice? But not to a point where you yourself cannot have control over your body. That I do not believe is of the spirit. That you have no control over the body. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. You've seen what I'm talking about, man. You've seen what I'm talking about, man. They be spinning. Woo, 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 woo. Some of you are even looking around to see if anyone's going to catch you. I know, you know. Sick and tired of it. Sick and tired of seeing it. Okay? All right? Sick and tired of it. All right? I don't want to see it. All right? Most of you know that you ain't, you. it's not it. You're out here running up and down screaming, the Lord, the Lord. Yeah, stop it. Stop it. Stop it. It's annoying. Okay? All right? Um, let's let's leave that stuff alone. If you really are born again, I don't see how you can't have control of your body. If you have a demon inside of you, which is what some of you are saying, because the way you're rolling, then I can see what you're saying. But if your if your testimony isn't that I had a demon inside of me and I was I got saved, I don't want to hear it because there wasn't a demon. It was you performing. It's you underneath pseudo uh, you underneath pseudo influence, right? And people don't realize that. Look. Pastors come sometimes, put their hand on my head, and I stand there. Oh, well, you expect me to go down? If that's the source of your power, you ain't got no power for me. I don't need you to fall. Do you see what I'm saying to you? Right? I don't need you to fall. So, you know, I'm just saying, let's just, let's just, let's just keep it a buck and keep it real. You know, let's keep it bucking, keep it real. So unless you got a demon inside of you, and unless you, unless you are, give, unless you're talking about when you gave your life to Christ on that very day, I'm looking at you like, yeah, yeah, you, you fake it. You know what I mean? Miss T, thank you very much. But you just made my point. You were in control. You said you weren't in control. You were in control. Yeah, you can, you're can. you actually right. Sorry, you're con you can't control yourself, right? But you had to sit down. To sit down, you have to be conscious. You don't sit down and be unconscious. You have to sit down. Do you see? It, it's a, it, the, the, the spirit is influence. You allow the spirit to influence you. So there's still control. So if I'm here, if if you spinning and falling and potentially stepping on people on the ground, I don't think that's the Holy Spirit personally. You know what I mean? Just saying. You know, just saying. You know, some of you, some of you want to be seen at the front of the church. Some of you want to be seen that you fell out, and yet you come back next week for more deliverance. You didn't get delivered the first time. You know what I mean? You didn't get delivered the first time. Let's not lie. You didn't get delivered the first time. Right? Because you do. I'll be seeing the same people that fell down today are coming back tomorrow. You didn't get delivered. That's why I'm saying that like, a lot of times it's fake. A lot of times it's fake. How many testimonies have I heard of many people, unless they've literally wrestled with the kingdom of darkness, they've literally been working with Satan themselves. You rarely hear testimonies of people like, I, I literally was arrested by it and I just couldn't stop myself and then I gave my life to Christ. And those people have radical changes. They don't have changes like you and me. Yeah? Those people that those people that have wrestled with Satan themselves, when they come to Christ, they don't play. They, they can't see life the same. If you're telling me I, I had demons, I'm going to be like, well, if you had a demon inside of you, I'm expecting, when you come to the other side, I'm expecting some seriousness, cuz. Because you've seen darkness. You ain't about to play with it and play with it don't play with it don't play with it. You ain't going to play with it. Whereas for us, we grew up in church. We know Jesus. There'll be some play because we, we, we never saw the kingdom of darkness. We might have sinned, yes, but we never saw the kingdom of darkness. You've seen the kingdom of darkness and you're telling me you've changed over and you're sort of saying, get the fuck out of it, get the fuck out, get, get out, get out of here. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> anyway, let's get back to what we're talking about. Get out of here, man. Get out of here. I love you. You, you know you're bluffing. Mm. You know you're bluffing. 
When I see too many prophetic, don't kind of things that I can see how it's going to be a bit of a mad thing. Do you know what I mean? You know, I can just see when it becomes performative and instead of it being, uh, you know, it's like the TB Joshua situation too. And then I'm like, you look, the, I'm not saying that because because people are going to get their, into their feelings. But I start talking. Anyway, um, let's, uh, hey, I've cried too. Listen, 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 listen. I've cried. You know what I mean? I've cried, right? But as And I, as I matured in Christ, I've cried. I've sat down. I've prostrated flat. You know what I mean? Sometimes, sometimes I get hot. I'm like, let me just lie down. I just need to lie down because it's getting hot. I feel the revelation catch it. You know? But it, again, I'm in control. You know? Uh, let's uh, leave that there then. Because that, that's interesting there. So I hope that she's still not, not still at that ministry. I hope that she's changed it. But because of that person's video, I wasn't sure. Uh, they put a comment there, so I wasn't sure. Um, I think she is. I don't know. Because um, I'm looking at her other, I'm looking at her post now. And again, I think it goes back to that minish that um this prophecy that I think she had it. Say two, say three. I am seeing three books inside your belly, inside your DNA. Let Piabo shut and I will use you, say the Lord, and I will use you even as a handkerchief for other women around the world. And I will show my glory through you, yes. I will show my strength through you to them. Yes. And today, the Lord said, Is a new beginning, yes. a new beginning. Yes. You have stepped in a places of quick sand and i was there to prevent you from sinking but today i will walk you the rest of the way yes. i see your future opening you've been crying and you've been crying you've been crying you've been fasting you've been fasting you've been fasting even at midnight i'm seeing you doing warfare prayers the lord said the heavens have heard my angels have been commissioned yes. i send them today to help you in the name of jesus <laughs> Say one, <laughs> say two, say three. <laughs> yo, yo, I told you I'm sick and I'm tired of this type of Christianity. I'm sick and tired of it. Sick and tired of it. It's like I got, it's the same way I got sick and tired of seeing the healers. Yeah, you know who they are, the Christian healers. But when COVID came, none of you were in the hospital and none of you were raising the dead. You were all at home with us. Okay, all right? Because you knew you can't tap into the spirit just like that whenever you want to, right? Now, I'm not saying we, do, we can't. I'm talking about the healing uh, aspect of things, right? I get sick and tired of this kind of preaching. So, 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 so listen, let me, be very, let me be very real with you. Even the enemy can see some aspects of your destiny. And it's not very hard because if you're on Facebook and you're on, on and if you're on, on on YouTube, you know I, I I I can give that to you if you want. You know I can tell you some things. Look, some people might believe that when when I'm able to tell someone's background, that is and sometimes it's just sometimes it's just psychology. You know what I mean? And oftentimes it could be the spirit of the Lord working through me. You know what I mean? But I'm saying like it it, it did, did him right there doing all of that you know with the music and everything like that and again that's not, that's nothing i don't like also too i'm starting to get away from that i don't mind um i don't mind uh um music I, I love music i'm not saying about music but sometimes when the music's too loud in worship i get a little bit like you know what i'm getting incentivized through the worship to worship and as much as i like it i'm also realizing i want to get to a place where i don't need you to incentivize me because i want to have an i want to have it I want to have a first-hand experience of me worshiping. I don't know if you, let me, this is for the Christians. If you're not Christian here, you ain't going to like this, but don't worry about it. Um, if you've ever prayed before, okay, let me talk to those who are Christians out here. You know what I'm talking about, right? You ever start praying and you start praying, it gets to a point where you start praying, a song just comes to your heart. You don't know what, it, you don't know where it came from. A song just came to your heart, right? 
and you, you get to a place in prayer where the song just comes and you, you know, and, and you make up a song sometimes. The lyrics are just coming to you at that point in time. You may not even be the greatest singer. You may not even be, but you just start singing. And that is the authenticness I'm talking about, that, 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 that you, you can't buy that aspect. But when you're playing the drums on 100, and I'm not saying we shouldn't have drums, by the way. I want drums. And when you're playing the drums on 100, when the piano is at 100, this is what we call corporate worship. It's not full worship. It's corporate worship. Right? When we talk about corporate worship, do you know what corporate worship was for? When you talk about the outer, inner, and the uh, holy of holies, the outer, uh, um, I will enter his course with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his course with praise. I will say that it's the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. When you enter the outer court, I think, that, was it the outer court only? In the outer court, I'm trying to remember, ah, oh, is it the outer court or the inner court? Which is the outer court? Remember the outer court? Outer court where everyone can be. In the outer court, everybody can be there. That's the corporate. If I remember correctly, I might be wrong, so someone can correct me. The outer court, uh, court can be everyone. Then you get to the inner court, and there's only a few people that are allowed into that space. And then the inner of the holy of holies is one to one. It's one to one. You understand what I'm saying to you? It's one to one. At that point, there is no one else but for mono or mono. It's you and God. And I think that's how I see prayer too. That even in your solo prayer, you go from outer court where it's a bit loud, you go to inner court, it quietens down. And when you get to the Holy of Holies, when you get to the inner place of intimacy with God in prayer, I'm telling you, you can't hear nothing. In fact, time is no one. I know you guys know, you've prayed before, you got to a point where when you finish a prayer, you look at it and say, oh my gosh, I've been here for three hours. And I'm not saying anyone has to pray for three hours. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying you have to pray for three hours. What I'm saying to you is you can get to a point you don't even realize how long you've been there for. Yeah? Because you got lost because you went into the Holy of Holies. Once you get into that one-to-one -one conversation, you are locked in. You're focused. At that point, I'm telling you, it's a different kind of song you sing. And actually, it becomes such a consciousness of who you, of who this great person is, how great God is. When, so when you sing, how great is my God, sing with me how great. You sing it in a different way because you realize how deep it is. Like, you're like, it's my God and all oh, will sing. In fact, no, I will sing how great, how great is my God. You start personalizing it because you realize now it's mono mono. Right. So I'm just saying that what we just saw on that screen, I'm not against all that kind of stuff. But when I see it, I'm just like, sometimes I'm like, it's too much. It's too much. He ended it with the little, he ended it with the little, you know, uh, 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 he ended it with a little, you know, the little push on the head thing. Yeah. And she ends up falling down. And it's like, I mean, I mean, how great. It's my God. I'll sing to me how great he's my God. And all, oh, in fact, I will sing how great, how great is my God. The splendor of my king. Mm. Oh, clothed in man. And, just, and darkness tries to hide all oh, my light recovery. You know what I mean? You get deep into it. You know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, but anyway, let me get to the point where you guys, you said you wanted to, to, to listen to it one more time because, you know, you guys are terrible. But, you know, I'm just saying, you know, they, they, they try to take me out, but. I'm seeing you doing warfare prayers. Mm. The Lord said, mm. the heavens have heard. Mm. My angels have been commissioned. Yeah. I send them today to help you in the name of Jesus. <laughs> say one, <laughs> say two, say three. Yo, look at look 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 look. Why is an usher behind her already, man? This is what I'm trying to say. Like, why do I need to receive something and fall down? 
Why do I need to receive something and fall down? Why are we anticipating people falling? This is what I'm trying to say. Like we have so conditioned ourselves to falling, but it's like, why is that? Look, why is that? The, the guy is posted up. Okay, posted up. <laughs> Splendor of the king. <laughs> Clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice. You know, so again, I'm not hating on her or anything like that. I'm just saying, you know, I'm just looking at it like when you tell me, and listen, many people who have have said in the name of Jesus Christ have said they've produced a book. And had to rescind it. Remember the purity culture? That guy thought he was writing an amazing book. And at the time, it looked like he was helping people. And we see the detriment of the book. And the reality is, of course, people are going to grow. But my thing is, I don't think she's. I don't think she has matured enough to even write this book about spiritual warfare. What are you talking about? You know? You warring over your husband is not spiritual warfare. He a cheater. And potentially a narcissist. No matter prayer gonna change that. You know what I mean? So my, my thing is, it's like, it, it, you know, when you class what your husband doing as spiritual warfare, I'm like, this ain't war room. Okay? This is not war room. He's a consistent cheater. All right? This is not his first time cheating where he's about to go and cheat again. He's a consistent cheater, has been a cheater from the beginning. It's not spiritual warfare. So it, that tells me you don't even know spiritual warfare because you are warring a fight that doesn't need to be fought. Do you get what I'm saying to you? You warring a fight that doesn't need to be fought because this is not, this is not, this is not a, a, a situation where you have to fight. You need to let this go. You need to do a Kelly Rowland, run away now, run away now. You know, Denia Jackson's only 30 toes, you know, 30 years old. You know what I mean? Like you need that's you need to run away. You need to be doing a Joseph. This is not a time to start with spiritual warfare. It's a waste of time. And that's what I'm asking myself. Who is discipling you? Because how are they telling you this is a time to write a, a book on spiritual warfare? You ain't even know spiritual warfare because you, you're warring over things that don't need to be warred over. You know what I mean? You want to feel into war over? Uh, I don't know. Anyway, but I think she is there because this is one day ago, and she posted this up on the thing. And again, I'm not against it. I'm just saying that not everything is good. It's God. You know what I mean? Not everything that's good is God. This is I'm just gonna be real with you. You know what I mean? So free. There's free books that will follow God, healing God's way. Will set millions of women free as I teach you about the connection between the natural and the spiritual world's influences concerning the secret things you have struggled with for years. I started writing book two in December 22, and I look forward to releasing it to you as I come into agreement with this prophecy. Speaking over my life by Ed Sitchell Ministries, who teaches me spiritual things. Before my next book release, check out book one at the link. It's in the video and begin your healing journey today. The splendor of the king, clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, let all the earth rejoice. <laughs> he wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide. Greetings. I want to strike up a healthy dialogue concerning um, women who are dealing with some things very similar to my testimony in my story. And there's a lot of commentary that is starting to arise about how women have to make better decisions. And um, a lot of commentary that uh, from women saying, I can never, I would never, right? And I think that is incredibly insensitive to those who are um, experiencing this, who have a traumatized mind. And so I think that people who are saying this, they mean well, but they're saying it in ignorance. And it doesn't help those who are actually suffering in silence to feel like they can actually come out, speak about it, and then do, get some help to start to recover their identity and set up healthy boundaries and barriers. And with that, because there is a balance, 
trauma does not excuse bad decision making and behavior, but it does help us to understand the bad decision making and behavior. And with that, it brings compassion for other people. And so we really have to have a dialogue about this because um, the last thing we want to do is add on to the trauma and keep these women who are suffering in silence, who are afraid to even speak their truth and to reveal these things, to act, give them some words and some encouragement to come out of that place and that we will be here to support them. Okay, so just reading this part. So then you have spiritual standpoint that is often ignored, which provides an answer, the trauma bonding, otherwise known as a soul tie. See, this is why I don't like the word soul tie. Anything gets thrown into soul tie just because you want to be able to prove the fact that soul tie exists. Anything gets thrown into it. Now we've got trauma bonding as being a part of soul tie. I cannot. I cannot. I seriously cannot. I cannot. This is exactly what I'm talking about when it comes to soul tie. People will throw everything into soul tie just to prove soul tie's existence. So now trauma bonding is now part of soul tying. It's also known as soul tie. No, it's not. Soul tie doesn't exist. It's not real. It's a made up thing that we we as over spiritualists like to grim. So now we're now throwing into it trauma bonding. But anyway, I'm sure that the the spirit that will enter you through sex will also collect you with soul tie. But the negative soul tie I expressed in my experience. Uh, heavily influenced a lot of my decisions that involve the demonic spirits of mind blockage, uh, <laughs> mind control, can't give love and can't receive love, all unclean spirits. I had to get a cast out of me in the name of Jesus. Ah, uh, uh, she's still in this place. Now, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. You don't need a deliverance of a spirit. It's not a, it's, it, oh. It's heavy stuff. Okay. She says she has a negative soul tie that made her stay. But she had three therapists and not one of them could diagnose what actually happened to her. All of them said that, what well, she had a soul tie. Not one word. She said, maybe she could have told us, maybe I was codependent, guys. You know, I was dealing with a narcissist. Um, you know, me personally, I was, you know, um, I realized that it, all it was is unpacked as I had trauma from youth. And this, it, there's no name given to what you were doing. There's no, there's no, there's no, there's no name for what these, these therapists, you had three of them and not one of them could give you a word for what you are doing and what, what you, that, and see, this tells me that either these therapists are not what we, I like to call them this. They are Christian therapists, not therapists who are Christian, which is different. You know, um, you get what I'm saying to you, right? There are. Christian therapists and then our therapists who are Christian. And what I mean by that is there are Christian therapists, people who are in a church who read the Bible up and down and think they can therapize people and then call themselves a therapist or call themselves a coach or call themselves a counselor. Right. And they're really not good. They really aren't good. Okay. All right. They often are in the, in the space of your pastors, whatever, whatever. They ain't got the range. OK, they ain't got the range. And this is what happens as Christians. We are willing to play with our mental health. But with your physical health, you go and go to a doctor. I'm not saying that this is for sure. But I said it's giving me it's giving me. I'm not saying it, I'm not saying I'm not saying it's 100 percent this. But what I'm feeling like is that if you can even pronounce like up until this point, we're now still trying to call it. I had, a, I, had to, I had to have this thing cast out of me, this whole tie. It's telling me that you of all the therapists that you had, they couldn't tell you that you actually needed to work on some things. That, that that personally, okay, that personally you are dealing with X, Y, and Z, and that's what you need to work on. But instead it becomes, it's spiritual, I need, a, I need a soul tie to cast it out. No, you don't. This is the kind of preach, this is the kind of, this is the kind of preaching that goes like, that goes like this. You're not depressed, you just got a spirit. Let's cast out the spirit. Do you know what I mean? This is the kind of thing that happens, and we say, "Well, you're depressed. Let's cast out that spirit." Now, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. Uh, let me hold on. I believe I believe a lot of people's depression is based upon suppressed 
trauma that they haven't dealt with, right? But not all not all uh, uh, um, depression is is of that. Some depression is clinical. There is something clinically not correct of you. And that's okay because we understand that I, I, my leg may not be fully healed. Okay? You know what I mean? So all I'm saying in these moments is, okay, that personally, all right, personally is giving, I, I have a Christian therapist, not a therapist who's a Christian, which is different. You know what I mean? I'm making that distinction just to make it easier, that's all. Okay, so that's what I'm saying. Um, so she said, obviously, um, can't give love and can't receive love. All unclean spirits I had to get cast out. I mean, in the name of Jesus, we have to grow up and become mature in the body of Christ. We can deal with the experience I experienced, I expressed in my testimony, so that more men and women can be set free. I will have more on this topic in the coming days, and I hope we can have some mature, real tough, um, and holy conversation about how to better handle these situations in the body of Christ. Um. I believe when we can be, I believe when we can come up with some better strategies, we can save more marriages and defeat the spirit of abuse running rampant in marital confidence. Let me tell you how we can save some of these marriages. Let's not get into them. Okay? Let's not get into them. How we can save marriages is first and foremost, some of some people like yourself, Denea, needed not to be in that marriage. Your marriage was not savable. Yeah? Was not it was not savable. Okay? That's what I would, if I was a coach, I'd have told her, listen, babe, I appreciate you, but your marriage wasn't savable. You shouldn't have been in it in the first place. And see, one of the things I like about coaching is getting the person themselves to get to see where they are. And when they see where they are, they're like, oh, snap. I see it. And when they see it, they're like, you know what? I hear you. <laughs> you know, and you don't have to give advice at that point, Right. Because what you're doing is you're opening their eyes to see for themselves. Open my eyes to see Jesus seated upon the throne. You know, you want there to open their eyes. You want the scales to fall from their eyes so they can see themselves. So I'm saying that I'm not saying that uh, some marriages can't be saved. Some marriages need to be saved. And there are others that don't need to be saved. Yours is one of those marriages that was a sham. It didn't need to be saved because the brother was cheating from the beginning. And that's what I'm talking about, the, the, mis the misappropriation. You know what I mean? Okay. It's not a, this is not a bashing against her, by the way. This is more of a case. I know no, no one's saying that, by the way, in the chat. But I just want to make it very clear. We're not bashing her. We're just kind of bringing up. We're like, we need to ask questions. We need to ask serious, serious questions. Attention, all holy girls. I'm. You know? Hmm. She's definitely a businessman, that is why I'll tell you that. She's definitely a businesswoman. Be you. Be real. You know, definitely a businesswoman. So uh I ain't gonna be mad at it, you know. Um, but I just think to myself, there's certain areas that don't need uh the businesswoman aspect, and they need you just to sit down and heal and, and take some time and you know, uh refresh you know come back when you're fully healed and you know uh, good morning i you know, am or you've taken your time to sit on the on the bench and heal you know what i mean sit on the bench and heal we don't need to be you know what i mean like but someone needs to tell her that because if they don't I can see RC Blake there. Okay. If they don't, we're going to be falling again. Y'all better not endorse me next time. You know what I mean? Go on the podcast and endorse me. You know what I mean? I was talking about thing. I was like, <sighs> yeah. So someone said, uh, Christianity has been teaching women otherwise. Stay with your husbands. No matter what therapy was frowned upon with prayer, you could heal your mentor and i agree with you on this right my biggest issue and i agree my biggest issue is that if we're going to say people to stay together i need you to point them in the direction of a proper counselor whether that's somebody who's wise in the church but i'm talking about proper wise not talking about the wise that they they've gone through four or five infidelities and made it through their relationship because you know those ones are mad 
I'm talking about somebody who's long standing in a marriage who has wisdom, if that's what we're going to do. Otherwise, point them in the direction of an actual therapist. You get what I'm saying to you? Yeah. So I, I'm saying the church needs to do a, a, a better job making sure that people in these situations, look, if you're going to advise them to stay, point them in the direction of a proper therapist. Because what that person's going to, proper counsel, what that person's going to do is going to highlight just how dire the relationship is. Because, I, like I said, when I was a younger Christian, I was very judgmental. I was very judgmental of people breaking up from marriages because I was like, y'all just quitting did it? without fully knowing the extent of what people are going through, without actually asking questions on a deeper level to find out what the heck was actually going on. Now, some of you, yeah, we know you, you, you should have you should have never been there. Or if you were there, you messed up. That's fine. But if we're going to be saying for other people that are, it's looking a bit. You know what I mean? So that's what I'm saying, you know? So I'm not saying that, you know, healing can't come in these spaces, but I'm saying that, you know, let's point them in the right direction, um, you know, and, and point them in the direction of a pastor all the time. It, it's nuts. It's like, you don't ask for a Christian doctor. You ask for a doctor. Do you know why you don't ask for a Christian doctor? Because ain't you don't know whether they're Christian or not, number one. Number two, we don't categorize by a best doctor by their religion and their faith. You categorize by who the best is by their experience. So let's not categorize we need a Christian therapist. No, you don't. You need a therapist. Okay? And when you want to do the spiritual things, you go to your pastor for it. You know what I mean? When you want to do the spiritual things, you go to your pastor. Pastor, I've just got a suspicion. What did you see? All right. But when you're dealing with the things of the mind, my friend, Take yourself to the therapist. Go and heal. You know? Um, so, yeah. Um, it's tight right now between the situation. So, uh, it's tight. It's tight. It's tight. It's tight. It's tight. It's tight. I hope she gets the healing. You know? Um There's a praise on the inside that I can't give to myself. Holla if you hear me. <laughs> you know what I mean? From the depths of my soul. But excuse me, miss, if it seems a little giddy, maybe even strange. But there's a praise. You know what I mean? So I, I'm just saying, look, I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to end this now because, you know, um, you know, it'd be like that. I guess I don't know. I, I guess I've never really experienced, I understand why a lot of Christian therapists, though, because a lot of therapeutic tools are rooted in new age. It's very spiritual, dangerous. I mean, again, I think, again, real therapists use real therapeutic psychology. You know what I mean? Like... Real authentic therapists do real psychology. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm not saying there aren't things that are not psychology. I'm saying that let's 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 keep it a buck though. Not every therapist does new age stuff. And sometimes things that we call new age, it's just uh, not. I mean, again, I'm not into crystals, all that kind of stuff. I haven't heard any therapists talk about crystals and all that, that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Like, but I'm sure there are some people who do that. You know what I mean? Um. You know, so just be wise about it. Now, what I would say is um, I do believe, you know, financially, and I think you guys are kind of saying it as well. Financially, she's trying to make some money because that house cannot pay for itself. The lifestyle she's living cannot pay for itself. And she's been out of work. So I do understand that. Okay. All right. If, if, if I, I definitely understand, you know, I definitely understand as well that right now she financially has to look after herself and, you know, maybe because Derek Jackson's not necessarily providing financially, um, you know, we need to be able to um, make sure uh, that that is not the case and that she's not trying to survive. You you get what I'm saying to you? Because when you have that mindset, everything goes because you're trying to make a bit of money, um, you know. Um, so I, I get that as well. So, 
It's kind of tight. <clears throat> it's, it's difficult here. Someone said, okay. Not crystals, but law of attraction, manifestations, yoga meditations, transcendence. What kind of what kind of uh, therapists are doing this kind of stuff? We need to be avoiding them kind of Christian. Uh, you know, we need to avoid this kind of uh, therapist because as far as I'm concerned, when it comes to therapy, even count, I've had a few counselors and stuff like that. One, well, one or two. Let me say one or two. I've never heard them say about law of attraction, manifestation, yoga meditation, and transcendence. Maybe I'm missing out, but um maybe i'm missing out on that aspect but yeah um you know that's what part i'm maybe missing out against but yeah i've never had that but if they are again yoga is a bit touch and go i'm very careful with yoga but i think it's touch and go um and depends on what part of yoga you're talking about um you know Again, I, I feel like I feel again. I feel I feel like we may be making ourselves a little bit too scared of of therapists who aren't Christians and saying they go New Age. Do you know what I mean? But maybe I mean psychologists. Maybe I need maybe we need psychologists. But again, I, I feel like we may be doing a little bit of scared. Uh, you know, I'm not saying they don't happen, but I'm saying I feel like we may be doing a little bit of injustice. You know. Um, I think we're going to be doing a little bit of fear mongering. You know what I mean? Um, you know what I'm saying? So that has to be a Christian day because there's other therapists are definitely going to prescribe something that's anti God. And it's like, uh, yeah. Do you see what I'm saying to you? I don't, I don't think that's always the case. I just think, I think, I think we, there are going to be. <laughs> Whilst we're saying that, let me be honest with you. There are Christian therapists that are trash. All they know is Bible, and it ain't helping nobody. So it's on both sides. I think we have to be cautionary. Going with a Christian therapist don't mean we're, we're safe. A person needs to actually delve into psychology. That, honestly. You know? So, yeah. <clears throat> uh, but, yeah. Maybe I mean a psychologist. Maybe that's what I mean. Yeah, maybe I mean a psychologist, Lulu. You know what I mean? Maybe I mean psychology, psychologist. Then, but I, I mean, there should be some aspect. There's some. There should be. There should be some aspect of psychology involved. Like, it's not just listen. Like, I can't call you a therapist. You just listen. You know what I mean? Like, you're coaching at that point. You know. <clears throat> Someone said yoga is definitely 100 percent no go for Christians. Okay. I guess so. I mean, it depends what, I guess, obviously, doing the positions. The meditation part, I don't like that. I, I can understand why people don't like that. But, yeah. A therapist here is someone with a master. Okay, I hear what you're saying. A therapist here is a social worker with a master's degree. Okay. Fair enough. My last point, okay. I don't think it's fair being scared to stay here. Yeah, not fair. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, um, is, um, I'm just saying that we should be aware, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, I think you have to be aware. I think, I think you have to be aware that on both sides, it ain't great, you know what I mean? To on both sides, it ain't great. Um, so, um, I'm very careful of that, you know what I mean? You know, not to say on one side either. And the yoga thing, yeah, maybe we have to have another conversation. I need to probably dive deeper into that, um, into the yoga thing. But, yeah, uh, I don't want to demonize it straight away because there's a lot of things that we uh, take on board that, you know, might not necessarily, quote, unquote, be Christian. But, um, you know, I want to be, very, I, would, I would be, I wouldn't be so fast to demonize it straight away. I need to, I need to delve into it deeper. Um in terms of what parts you guys are using, if it's a yoga pose, you know what I mean? But, um, yeah. All right, guys, let's leave it there. Um, let's, uh, um, 
we're gonna end it there for you guys as well so make sure you guys like share subscribe and uh you know click on the bell button um you know click on that bell button for notification of uploads guys we appreciate you so uh don't do anything i wouldn't do baby don't do anything i wouldn't do baby okay all right we'll see you guys soon much not on my watch not on my watch Deuces.